Chris Rubeck. Uh, I'm an associate professor of economics at Lafayette. Um, so I'm going to talk about a course. Uh, it's an economics course with uh, both a 200 level economics prereq and a coding, uh, a programming class or experience prereq. So um, this is, you know, some stringent prerequisites. Uh, it means that students uh, don't necessarily know whether they can fit it into their schedule or when they can fit it into their schedule. Um, and the two times that I've offered it during the semester previously, I've had five or six students. Uh, and it's something that the students really value. It's something I enjoy teaching. It's also with that level of enrollment, I've gotten good uh, support from my department as far as you know offering it. But maybe it's a little bit easier to justify it uh, during the intercession uh, as well. Um, uh, rather than during the regular semester, regular semester. So this was also part of an initiative uh, at Lafayette to increase the number of students on campus, or at least taking classes <laughs> during intersection during intercession. Uh, and so there were uh, two other professors that also uh, were part of this uh, initiative. We'll see how it kind of progresses in the future. I'm not really going to talk about that initiative though. Uh, the course is also project based, so students are programming, as you can guess. Uh, they're working with each other to think about uh, what they're doing to give each other advice. Uh, and so it's important to fold that into the classroom experience as well. So the scenario is that, you know, the intent is that it be potentially cross campus. Uh, this was not cross campus, but it was uh, multi location. So we were in Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Texas. Um, and I've got a uh, fun thing for one of the students. So the idea is that it is one-to-one. -one. You know, it really is students talking to each other, uh, faculty member involved, um, and that they can be anywhere. So this is, we're missing one of the students in the class, uh, but the punchline is down there on the right. See if you can guess what that punchline is going to be. Um, so we were calling in through a web-based application. Uh, there are other things that I don't know much about. I don't know that much about Zoom, except that we did use Zoom. Um, and mostly I used it pretty well. Uh, Zoom has a neat feature in that you can record uh, while you're doing it. You just have to remember to record. So <laughs> sometimes they reminded me to do that. Um, obviously, with, with four students, one of them is not pictured. You'll get to see him later. Um, uh, with four students, you know, I'm not too worried that they're not going to attend class because it's being recorded. But also because of the fact that we might have issues with connection, mm. I didn't even think about it. But one of the students says, it's okay, you know, Sam can get back in if uh, uh, he can always look at the recording later. Oh yeah, press record. Um, <laughs> uh, so, but, you know, obviously then uh, there's not quite so much pressure on making sure that that connection is in his pain. So say there's connection problems with one student, the other three aren't, you know, sitting around twiddling their thumbs waiting for that one to be uh, reconnected. Um, uh, and then what I had was a system in a room. So here you can see me in front of a whiteboard and a projector. Um, I also, for a few days, used a blackboard because uh, that room wasn't available. You know, strangely enough, even though I scheduled for it. Um, uh, I'll have another punchline later about where I uh, did things as well. The fun thing about this slide, can anybody guess where he is? He's in an Uber on the way from the airport. So, <laughs> so we didn't get back with how it impacted his data plan. Uh, but basically, the first hour of class, he spent on the way from the airport. And we were kind of, we didn't know if he was going to be able to attend. So part of my discussion with the students during December, knowing that they were going to be in this class, was what were their plans for attending the class? Okay. Uh, so again. Um, we had uh, both activities that we did together uh, as a group, as well as asynchronous uh, posting things like this. The, uh, I learned that F2F means face-to-face. -face. Um, <laughs> uh, but students attended both ways. So we started out the week with everybody being in the four different states uh, that I mentioned. And in, during the middle week, so it's a three-week session during the middle week, everybody slowly came on campus. Uh, fortunately, everybody was there. If I had wanted to give a midterm, we didn't think we didn't have to think too carefully about testing, but that's obviously uh, something to think about. And then for the final third week of class, everybody was on campus. So we had experience 
Uh, obviously, that last one I had lots of experience with already, you all have experience with. But we had experience both with everybody being away, as well as uh, some people being in the classroom with me and some being uh, remote. Um, so we used uh, Zoom. A neat, another neat thing about Zoom is that you can do breakout sessions. We won't see, I'm going to have some video. I hope the video goes pretty well. We'll see. I hope they don't bore you, but it's got some interesting stuff. Um, but we won't see the breakout sessions. Uh, the breakout sessions are nice because it means that students can meet in groups. And so even if you have, say, 30, 40 students, uh, you can put them into groups. They can be randomly assigned by Zoom and things like this. Um, the one drawback is that, for me, joining a group wasn't quite as natural as I would have liked it to have been. If you think about a classroom where you say, everybody get together in groups, you can kind of scan the classroom and see what's going on. You can see if there's a group not talking much. But it's a little bit more cumbersome in Zoom to do that. So I had to kind of think a little bit, not too much, because it was two pairs of two students each. Uh, uh, um, but I, I would want to think a little bit more about how to kind of monitor what's going on and thinking about which group that I needed to talk to and things like this. Um, so, so it was great for the students to be able to talk to each other. Again, during the first week, we had students in disparate places across the country getting together. And then during the middle week, just to make sure it worked, you know, I had, when I had two students sitting in the classroom, I had each of them connect with somebody off campus. Um, and in a way, that kind of preserves a similar experience for everybody, too, because if I had the two students that were physically together and the two students who were not physically together, I mean, wh whether it's important to have the same experience or not uh, is an open question, but, but, but I could do that. Um, uh, you'll see in the video that we do online simulations in this class, so it was also very useful to have that connection where everybody could take control of the screen uh, at different times, so we kind of pass that control around. Um, and uh, uh, note two, and as we thought about this ahead of time, uh, and you know, I had some, some good support from our uh, IT people, as we thought about this ahead of time, we thought about, okay, what's going to happen when we have some of the people in the classroom and some of them uh, remote? How are we going to deal with this? Are they just going to be in the class? Well, they happen to be in the classroom, but they were looking at their screens. I mean, there's a, there's a pro and con to that. Again, it, it preserves the experience for everybody. Um, but certainly, uh, we did leverage the fact to some extent that they were in the classroom with me uh, as well. Um, there was a sense in which, sure, they could look at their screen to see my presentation, but they could also look up at the presentation that I was, I was doing on the board. It, so th there is some kind of weird things, but we didn't run into anything that was uh, terribly strange uh, about having some people here looking at screens as if they were still in their yes bedroom at home. <laughs> um, uh, but, but it was... Uh, so, uh, you know, you want to think about what it is, what is it about your outcomes? What is it about what the students are getting out of your class that you want to replicate and maybe improve on by, by having this experience? So being able to present results to each other uh, was important. Uh, certainly if it's an end of semester project and everybody's going to end up on campus, then maybe it's not so terribly key that that happened. But, but in our case, we were doing this throughout the semester, the three-week uh, interim session. Um, and so you know, it was important to be able to kind of present things to each other. Um, I don't know. I, this was my first time teaching an interim session. It's also interesting. You know, The students felt really like they were doing this class all the time. And, and it is, right? It's a, it's a compact three-week uh, full semester. So they really felt like. Uh, it was it was a pretty intense uh, experience, but I guess that's more about the, the uh, intersection. Um, so uh, important to be able to collaborate, uh, both in the usual way that you can post things online, as well as this way that I've I've talked about. Um, and then what I did is um, I used an iPad, and I'll I'll show you some of that. Uh, and um, I was able uh, both through Zoom. Um, entirely through Zoom, to have two things on the screen at once. So I could both have my notes as well as uh, the slides. Um, so by sharing my the, the screen of my laptop, on that laptop I had where I was writing the notes on the iPad. Of course, my iPad was down here, not on there. Um, but then in addition, I was showing the slides on that screen as well. So in a way, I could present both of those things to everybody at the same time. Um, 
And uh, so, you know, it did help these students. I may have had, you know, 25 or let's see, 33% uh, more attendance, right? Maybe there was that fourth student who wouldn't have been able to take this class had he needed to be on campus on January 2nd or whenever it was that the interim session started. So the flexibility that these gave, that gave these folks made a lot of sense. In an interim session, it also makes sense that they're going to be there at the end of the week and they kind of liked being on campus, you know, kind of getting ready to go uh, for, the, for the start of the semester. Um, it worked out nicely that, that all of them eventually were there for that last week. I'm not sure how it would have worked if maybe somebody was, was away the whole time. I thought I was going to offer this to non Lafayette students. I'm glad I didn't because the, the um, technology, you know, uh, wasn't without fail. Uh, although it really did work, you know, 99% of the time, but it was enough for me to deal with uh, other than thinking again about if I offer it to non Lafayette students, they're probably not going to come to campus. Will we require to come, them to come to campus? Of course, it also depends on how your registrar, provost, et cetera, administration looks at this question uh, as you think about doing uh, this kind of thing. But I do, in uh, the future, plan on uh, opening up to non Lafayette students. This class has its relatives around the country and maybe around the world. Uh, there's there's uh, somebody at American that teaches a class like this uh, and has done it for a while entirely online. Um, so in a sense, we're also kind of developing a, somewhat of a community. Maybe we're competing with each other. I don't know. Um, but I also like to think, as 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 I've uh, I think I've already pointed out, that um, the idea that we're teaching a specialized class and can draw from more geographic locations or from students in more different kind of constraints means that we're more likely to be, to be able to offer that specialized class. So in a sense, this ability to go online means that there, there could be more available to every student uh, in terms of the classes that they can take. So um, I've explained Zoom. Uh, on the iPad, I use the GoodNotes app. Uh, and it has a USB connection, but so good notes. So this is just a screenshot I did uh, of my iPad. There's good notes up there. Many people swear by notability. Um, a colleague of mine has said, you like whichever one you started using first? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe. Um, uh, good notes does have the ability um, over Wi-Fi uh, to uh, share, to to display, and you'll see this in the video, to display just the uh, paper that you're writing on, the paper that you're writing on, and not the controls. Mm -hmm. So it kind of frees up the, the surface to not be encumbered, in, as far as the students looking at it, with you know the little thing that says tap here to, to copy or tap here to paste kind of thing. Um, you'll see that I had to deal with the fact that um, it may not be true that your Wi-Fi connection is available. So uh, at Lafayette, we have a certain kind of enterprise level software that's all scary, concerned about security. And so this kind of a peer-to-peer -peer connection uh, over Wi-Fi that is required for this functionality in GoodNotes was blocked by uh, our uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, the word is that that might go away in the future, but it was not something that Lafayette could control. It was something that was uh, designed into the system by the people providing uh, this um, off-the-shelf, uh, not free, but off-the-shelf uh, uh, aspect. Um, but I was able to use the USB connection <laughs> instead. Okay, So I could connect via USB, and then my iPad uh, appeared as a window, and anybody's iPad can do this. Um, there's like a little, you can Google it. There's a little trick and work around. It's you act as if you're recording a movie. Uh, there's a few things you do, but it does mean that you you lose that functionality that I described about only having the, the paper there. Um, my workaround was to work from home. So uh, I was I was frustrated by this. I knew that I could do better. So uh, somewhere around Wednesday of the first week, the students go, "Oh, you're at home now too." <laughs> <laughs> you saw the piano in the background. Yeah. Um, and uh, but it did allow me to have a little bit more functionality uh, in terms of what I was doing, and 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 kind of test to see whether I wanted to raise a louder voice in terms of uh, what IT. You know, should do for me, or what I, what I, what changes I would like to see. Um, 
next semester, uh, a group of us at Lafayette uh, will be doing something that has been done before at plenty of places, I'm sure, but also at Lafayette. Uh, the idea of using Apple TV uh, to make this connection. Um, and it's kind of a just works kind of thing, uh, but that's not what this talk is about, so uh, maybe talk to you about it sometime in the future. Um, so this is the, the five of us. <laughs> this is in a fun screen capture where I'm looking fairly directive. Um, uh, but note that in addition to the camera on me from uh, the computer, we also had a camera that was pointed towards the whiteboard. Okay, so students could choose. What you'll see in this, what you see here, is not exactly what the students saw. Um, again, you'll see that they all were in comfortable places too. Um, uh, it's not exactly what they saw, uh, but you'll get a feel for what students see. Uh, an individual can control, like, pinning this display so that it's big and then having the individuals uh, posted uh, on the side. And of course, somebody could have chosen uh, Josh to be displayed as big. They wouldn't have, but you know, you can choose any of those, of, of those different feeds to be your big display in terms of pinning it up. Um, and like uh, Google Hangouts, it can be, it's voice activated and things like that. That's also why you might pin something so you're not flipping between the different people uh, who are talking. So now I'm gonna um, try this video. And um, I hope that we enjoy. And so um, I may do some pausing and things like this. Let's think about what I can do. Oh, can you know? Well, hold on. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's going to work. If we were HDMI, I'm sure that would work. Okay, so let's just try turning this up. If, if everything blares, I apologize. It's just coming out of here. I'll, I'll explain a little bit. So, um, if you're up close, you're, you're forced to listen to me also. So this is me writing uh, in the case of uh, using the um, using just the display, uh, and it's, it does nicely. So that you know you can use uh, your stylus as a pointer, as you see with my little red. Um, that's not involved in my presentation. Uh, that is involved in the presentation. Um, so, but again, using my pointer, so that was, I believe, my mouse on my computer at the time. But again, I was able to point things out. Also able to see all four of the students uh, along the side there. This then shows a uh, large display uh, on the iPad. Um, again, because this is working in that kind of special sense, uh, if you saw my picture, you'd see, you know, our computer room at home in the background. Um, so. So now we move to having two students on campus. Uh, you can see the second person down, Ben, is in the room. And then you don't see Josh. You see me in the room. You also see that now the display, uh, here I am trying to copy something, which is actually pretty cool. On the blackboard or the whiteboard, can you copy things and move them? <laughs> kind of nice when you have to redraw that same graph. Um, and so, but you also see all the controls. JJ's obviously uh, excited. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but you, you know, so you see more of the controls in this case, but it's still using that USB connection rather than the Wi-Fi still does a, a pretty good a job. This then shows uh, the fact that I'm sharing my full screen, uh, and um, along with the iPad window, uh, again, you're seeing all the controls, but uh, maybe it's not too terrible. I was, and, and I had to work around since I couldn't point as easily. I could use this functionality in uh, GoodNotes to kind of highlight the point that I was making. But you can see in that previous situation that I had both the slide behind me, uh, behind it, and the iPad, so I could see both of those things. Here I'm doing basically a keynote presentation. Um, and then here students are discussing, I'm just going to turn it around and see if it happens. So we're going to JJ, Josh, Jack, and Ben, and uh, to go with 
finishing early, let's take about four ish minutes each. Uh, Don't worry, it's not 16 minutes a day. <laughs> there we go. JJ, you have the floor. So, getting. Okay, you're back. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. There was <laughs> Okay. <laughs> JJ needed two computers to make his system work, which was very interesting. Okay. He's also absolutely the most technically adept. He's working at Google in a few couple of months. Um, so, can you guys see my screen? I honestly can't tell anymore. Yes. All right, see. Just notice it's not giving you anything. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I'm going to talk about the Google Cloud Server is Simple economy. It's about 9,000 use case uh, to get to um, a, a decent, a decent setup, basically, where like, everyone is uh, at uh, one uh, So one of the biggest problems for mine was uh, one. Okay. Okay. So let me let me say this a couple things briefly. Uh, Jack and JJ, can you see the board? So, you know, the first thing to note is... Two guys on campus, two guys off. I guess you can tell by the background. It's fine. <laughs> you know, putting in ranges for any number of parameters, right? Of course, you yeah. may just have a single parameter. And so the thing to note here is that, obviously, right now, you can't see what I'm writing on the board, right? But what they've got is either they're on campus and they're looking up at the board, as you can see, or they, these two guys have that pinned and it's their whole screen mm -hmm. rather than, and then the four of us, uh, or these, the, the other three or four are, are down the side here. So again, that allowed me to interact on what was going on in their presentation, move back to then uh, Josh's presentation. We don't see Josh at the moment. And I think we're all familiar with, you know, we think carefully before we share our screens, right? <laughs> I think Josh did think carefully. We don't see anything terribly incriminating. <laughs> It might be the case that um, even having people connected, although we had a, you know every once in a while the switch over some time, it might be actually even better because everybody can just automatically share their screens rather than coming up and getting connected and doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a thought. Anything else that you want to show us? Um, I had the percolation model, which is on a different Excel sheet. Uh, but it, it, looks, it looks basically the same as this. It's what you expect to see. It's just the uh, threshold is a little higher up. So cool. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, the behavior thing is super cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was doing this, this basically the same thing CS150, and it would take so much longer to write the tests. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, hard code everything. <laughs> so, you know, getting people to interact has its own uh, aspects uh, as well. Okay, so there we go. So that's that. Did what I just did work. Okay, so um, uh, to finish up, uh, so uh, you know this, this, these breakout rooms. Zoom is not free, uh, but it's pretty cool. So the breakout room is uh, nice. Um, note that we really did integrate everybody, whether they were on campus or not. Uh, this kind of equal access thing uh, worked pretty well for us. Um, you know, it didn't matter what building on campus or home off campus I needed to be at, I could do that. Um, and it really was pretty easy to use, except for forgetting to record, which is kind of amazing that uh, I could never really remember to do that. Um, 
it's, it was a little bit problematic still, as I've described, because of Wi-Fi. Uh, but it, you know, this idea that you train a camera on the board and it works, I didn't, I didn't think it, that such a low-tech way of doing things would work, right? Um, it, it, it actually did pretty well. Um, audio feedback was something really we had to think about ahead of time, and it's good that we did, because you've got a whole bunch of microphones and a whole bunch of speakers. You know, in this case, we had at least three of each, right? Maybe four, counting, you know, that we just heard with the feedback here. Um, so it's, it's, you know, managing that local aspect wasn't entirely obvious, and I'm not really sure how I did it, honestly, right? The IT guy that was helping me did a good job setting me up, but I, maybe I was lucky most of the time, or maybe it was just automatic. And of course, with any uh, online kind of situation, um, students can be distracted. Uh, I felt like they did pretty well at, at, uh, at not being distracted. But the truth is, even in the classroom today, they can be uh, pretty distracted. So I think we're doing questions later. But.